This morning's guest speaker is probably best known as reporter Billy Newman in the CBS series Lou Grant. And uh, she, uh, during her five years on the critically acclaimed series, she earned five Emmy nominations. Her television career includes guest starring roles on over 30 series, and she also starred in many made-for-television movies as well as miniseries. In addition, she played the role of Kate Harper in the NBC series Day by Day and co-starred in the Billy Crystal series Sessions for HBO. But you may not know that Linda began her career in the Twin Cities. She's a graduate of the University of Minnesota, where she appeared on the Minnesota Centennial Showboat. And then she began her professional career at the Guthrie Theater, where she appeared in the acting company for two seasons. Since then, she has performed from New Haven in Washington to Los Angeles in prestigious theaters across the nation. And I'm proud to say that she's making her directing debut here at the Phipps Center with a show entitled Love, Tears, and Laughter. Please welcome the very talented Linda Kelsey. Thank you, John. Um, yeah, I do feel I've come home. Uh, I lived in California for 25 years, and we relocated here in Hudson uh, about one year ago. Maybe I should tell you why we're in Hudson. Many of you know why, and um, many of you probably don't. My husband, uh, his name is Glenn Strand. He's Eric Strand's brother, and Resco is the family that, or the business that their father started when they were little boys in their basement. <laughs> the first job that my husband ever had was stuffing envelopes for his dad at a penny an envelope uh, for Resco. It went on to become a very successful business, as you probably know, here in Hudson. And I think it relocated here from New York maybe 12 years ago. And uh, Eric now runs it um, and has done a beautiful job. And my husband, Glenn, has come to join the business and work with Eric. So when Eric made this offer to us, <clears throat> to Glenn actually, uh, we decided in the space of about 24 hours to totally flip our lives over and move to Hudson from California, and it's been a wonderful choice. We love living in Hudson, and uh, I more and more I discover what a wonderful community it is. We were not living in Los Angeles when we moved here. We had been living in a city about the same size as Hudson, actually, a beautiful city up in the mountains, about 70 miles north of Los Angeles. And there are many similarities, um, the scenic beauty, uh, for one, it was a resort community. But uh, there are also dissimilarities due to the state of the California economy. The uh, school system was not anything approaching what we have for our children here, which Glenn and I appreciate very much. And the cultural opportunities that uh, are here in Hudson were also unavailable to the residents of that city. And I... I just say this because I hope you know every day how, how incredible it is to have a facility like the Y here and this incredible arts facility in, the, in your town because it's unusual and uh, it's a real treasure. <clears throat> Eric, we were deciding where to live and um, <clears throat> Eric, who's a phenomenal salesman, was doing a very low-key uh, approach. We had thought of living actually in St. Paul. You see, I grew up in St. Paul, so I was, I was kind of uncomfortable about not living in Minnesota because that was where my, my heart, I thought, was. And I said, you know, we could just live across the river. You know, you know I want to be in Minnesota because I'm from Minnesota. And, da, da, da. And, and so we kept, uh, you know, my husband was very patient about that, and we looked at places, we thought of Stillwater, we looked, you know, around in Afton and different places, and Eric said, well, just let me just give you a little tour of the town. And um, <clears throat> this is after, by the way, we had flown here to uh, visit the schools, and we, we saw, we must have gone to about eight schools uh, in various areas, and we decided to base where we would live from finding the best schools for our children. And we 
Uh, and Hudson was really coming out great <laughs> in that in that uh, pursuit. <clears throat> and Eric was driving us, and he said, oh, let me just take you by the Y. I went, oh boy, this is nice, <laughs> this is good. And then he said, oh, Linda, I've got, you know, keys to the FIPS, I'm on the board there, let me just show you the FIPS. And he knew this was the deal closer. <laughs> And it was, I really couldn't get over it. The, the theater itself is just so beautiful, and, and the facility, and, and it's a state-of-the-art theater. It's got, uh, the scene shop alone is, I'm sure there are 15 theaters in the Twin Cities that envy the scene shop and the costume shop and the technical facilities there here, as well as just the beautiful uh, stage itself, and of course the black box, in addition to everything else that's here. So. I was thrilled, and I said, that's it, and we're here. <clears throat> so, uh, to this play, that's what I'd like to talk about most today. Uh, John approached me and said, you can do basically what you would like to do, <laughs> anything you would like. I think that's what you said, basically, in those words, <laughs> at the FIPS. And it's, that's one of those offers that... <laughs> what? <laughs> That's one of those offers that's almost too, you know, it, it, it covers so much ground, it sort of sets your imagination going. I think you thought I would say I wanted to act, right, <laughs> in, so, in something. That was probably your first uh, idea. And I, I didn't even know that directing was something I wanted to do at all. It never has been before. But I started to think about it and... Being here, my daughter is a freshman in high school now, and looking around at what is here for Hudson uh, and for the children at Hudson, I, have, I just had to notice that until this performing arts uh, center or whatever, I don't know what you call it exactly, at the high school is completed, there is not and has not been a drama program for uh, high school students at Hudson High School. And that's because the FIPS exists, and it's always been a wonderful place for kids to come and audition, but it is competitive with all the other surrounding areas. So students from Stillwater and River Falls, of course, are invited to audition also. So it hasn't really substituted entirely for a drama program. Now, I grew up... Um, at a, well, uh, what I want to say is, for me, having a drama program in my high school was, could have been life-saving. It was, I was so on fire with wanting to act that if I hadn't had a place to put it, I don't know what I would have done. <laughs> and in my high school, I had a mentor, I had a teacher who took me under her wing, who saw some potential, and gave me incredible opportunities to explore that and of, along with many other students as well. And I am eternally grateful she is still in my life. And I just felt I wanted to maybe for, a, just to give a little taste of that to the, to the students at Hudson High School. And I wanted to provide the opportunity for them to have their own theater, their own class play, as it were, uh, for Hudson. So I presented this idea to John, and who very graciously uh, accepted it and, and took it to the Children's Theater Committee, who also endorsed it, because it, it's unusual, it's a first, and it did, uh, it did mean that the audition process would be exclusive to Hudson High School. And I opened uh, it to just juniors and seniors, because the seniors will be leaving, and they will never be able to perform in the new stage, and uh, and the juniors will have limited access to using it. So my daughter couldn't audition, but that <laughs> <clears throat> and I was looking for a play and uh, couldn't really come across the right play. We went back and forth all summer about you know this play, that play, the other play, and so I got to thinking about it and thought I would instead pull together an evening of scenes from the world's great dramatic literature on the subject of being a teenager. What I see in these students today is their lives are absolutely incredible. They live very full, very uh, complex 
lives. They're confronted with things every day that I certainly didn't deal with at their age, and it's, it's quite uh, amazing to be a teenager in today's world. And I wanted to give them an opportunity to, to explore their life, what they feel, what they encounter, what, what life is, uh, through drama. So I picked these scenes, and it covers everything. We deal with, well, we have a scene from Rebel Without a Cause, that's a heartbreaking scene with his parents, with, with this boy having parents that cannot help him, cannot support him, they're cowardly. And he comes home and, and, and he begs them to help him, and they can't. And we have a, the balcony scene from Romeo and Juliet, which is, of course, full-blown, head over heels, knocked out in love for the first time. We have... Uh, Scenes about teenagers who are afraid and, and isolated and scared that they're not popular. And, and uh, we have comedy. and It runs the full gamut. And, and these kids, I have to say, I didn't know. I knew I would love doing this, but I didn't know I would fall in love immediately with 11 kids and uh, that they would endear themselves to me so thoroughly and immediately. I... I, they, they inhabit my dreams at night. I wake up thinking about them and how to, you know, fix this and do this. And, and they bring to me so much. It, it just astonishes me. And I'm, I encourage you all to support them in this effort and, and support the FIPS uh, and congratulate uh, the, the Children's Theater Committee for stepping out and doing this kind of bold new thing in Hudson this year because it's, it's, it's really wonderful. You know, these kids, I don't know how many of them, if any, will go on to a professional career in theater, but that isn't the point of it. The point is that theater offers this opportunity for enrichment, and it's a team effort, and everybody plays. Nobody sits on the bench. Um, Francis Ford Coppola once called actors, athletes of the heart. And I quoted that to them on the first day of rehearsal, and I really do think that's one of the most beautiful ways of explaining, describing what actors do. They work out very hard to create what they do, and these kids are, this is deep stuff. Between you and me, they are alternately blown away by what they they experience in the rehearsal process, and then they're afraid <laughs> because, and then they have to pull back because I I just realized today that the the rehearsal process is paralleling their own lives. They step out and they risk something, and then they deal with what that felt like, and it's very scary, and but they're willing to do it. So we go through this thing where. They, they do it, and then they get scared. And they do it, and they get scared. And uh, so, you know, Athletes of the Heart really does dis describe it. It's, it's a workout. And, you know, I know there are some schools where you can letter in, um, in music. I think you can letter in drama. And I'm really hoping that that can happen at Hudson High School. I think that would be just wonderful, that you didn't just have to be... Uh, out on a field uh, performing and doing your best there, but that that lettering in the arts would also be something that could be acknowledged and possible. So that, uh, I think that's basically what I wanted to share with you, and I'm, I'm happy to take any questions you have. <clears throat> yes? Um, you said this is your experience directly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Get my in addition to what you've learned about the kids, what what about you professionally? <laughs> oh boy. <clears throat> well, I'm I'm not I don't think I'm a very good director. <laughs> <laughs> I I I chose things that were going to be very um actor oriented. I don't have big staged fight sequences or anything because I haven't a clue how to do that sort of stuff. And as an actor, I've always been very, um, I've been a good director as actor because I don't, I don't think ahead to what, what I'm supposed to do next. I just like to be, you know, 
the director to help me. So what I'm doing is I'm teaching them to act. I know I'm teaching them some acting skills, and I'm learning very fast how to direct and how to do how to stage things and and things like that. And so it's 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 a steep learning curve for me, and I hope it turns out. <laughs> Yes. Cindy, your, your, in your previous life as a popular TV actress, you were on a show that many of us enjoyed. How do you think TV has changed? Do you watch your teenager watch? No. <laughs> Don't get me started on this subject. I'm very dismayed by what's on television. I'm just very dismayed. And it's one of the reasons why I'm happy to have moved away. I still work, I have an agent, and I do work through, you know, Los Angeles. But um, I've, I've frustrated more agents and managers by the things that I t turn down. Uh, than the, I turn down many more things than I accept because it's, it's, my rule of thumb has always been, would I allow my children to see this? Would I be proud to have my children see me do this? And more often than not, I've had to say no. So I think we're in a very odd time, and uh, it, it's sad because it's such a powerful medium. That's one thing I did learn, um, and why I do take it so seriously. I, the instantaneous response to television is mind-boggling. When I was doing Lou Grant, uh, you know, we, we dealt with very topical subjects, very, very uh, current important things that were happening. For instance, my character was a DES daughter, fictitiously. And uh, we did that actually as a public service to alert women in the country about DES. And um, there were, the response was <laughs> unbelievable. The letters that I got, people, you know, who found out like the next day that they had cancer, that they had, their mothers had taken DS, that they went to the, you know, doctor and said, I think I'm, I'm one of these people. I mean, it, it literally saved lives. It was extraordinary. And, and millions of people are sitting there watching what, you know, you or whoever, the writing, the whatever is presented to them every night. So we have to take it seriously. I mean, I didn't mean to go on so long, but it makes me nuts. <laughs> I wish I wish there was more that I wanted to do in that medium. I really do. Do you think this rating system is valid for those that you have kids, or is it just? You know, I think it's a I think it's a step the rating system, but I wish there was a rating system for taste. <laughs> <laughs> I think I you know to just say how many times a word occurs in a certain um, you know or this or that uh, intimate act or something, and that and that means that it's rated so and so it, it doesn't it doesn't really get it there's there's a huge lack of taste on television and uh, i believe in free speech but come on <laughs> yeah you mentioned you uh, turn about eight different schools or systems what uh other couple things that really stood out about that the schools from the outside of well, uh, you may have guessed that I'm interested in the arts. <laughs> and uh, music programs uh, was huge. They're, in California, they beg people who are in the arts to come and just come and just show kids what an instrument is, that this is how a clarinet sounds, because there's no music program at all in the public schools. Um, it's, it's hideous. There's almost nothing. And so uh, that was just a knockout, that there were so many things that we would say, well, here's the band room, and here's the two choir rooms, and here's the, the composition room and for music, for one thing. And I saw teachers, when I interviewed teachers and administrators, I saw people who weren't burned out, who, were, who obviously loved what they were doing, were enthusiastic about teaching. And I think they know that to teach in this school system is great, so they appreciate it. I think it's probably highly competitive to be hired here. I would guess so. That, um, you know, because it's a good system, that, that they can attract good teachers. We personally interviewed every fourth grade, fifth grade teacher. My daughter was, my youngest daughter was entering fifth grade in Hudson. <laughs> 
uh, and handpicked our, you know, the, her teacher because um, she's a kid with certain needs and and frankly we had brought them from a very unusual um, small private school where there were only seven children in her fourth grade the year before so we knew she was going to be having a huge shift in her life and we just we had a hard time choosing a teacher it was just so great everyone was so receptive and understood when we talked about her and her needs they were just so receptive and and helpful and they're having a great school experience it's, and it's so different. It's, it's, it's diametrically opposed. They were in a school where they didn't even receive grades. They were in a non-competitive school where they received evaluations. So instead of letter grades, so this is the first time they've had A, Bs, and Cs. And they're digging it. <laughs> <laughs> I think will you be acting? Will you be acting at the fifth? We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a recovery time from this project. <clears throat> I, um, there, you know, we've talked about it. There are certain things because I'm in the union, and this is not a union theater that are slightly t tricky, but not impossible to deal with. Yes. Everybody's doing remakes now on television. Andy Griffith, the uh, sheriff of the nursing home. Uh, <laughs> did you really talk about Lou Grant and tabloid years? <laughs> There's been so much talk. I got a letter last week from the producer of Lou Grant saying, one more time, they have taken a, a script to the network. Um, and CBS passed on it for about the fifth time. Uh, CBA, um, Lou Grant was canceled in sort of a controversial way, so we don't know. I think the network's still afraid to, to touch it. I don't know if you know what happened, but it was... <laughs> it's on cable. <laughs> no, simply, Ed, Ed Asner... Um, with you know my full endorsement, everyone on the everyone in the company uh, was very politically outspoken, and in areas that did not uh, agree with the uh, administration of the country at the time. And there were some very powerful people in the government who were also were very powerful people in the entertainment industry that wanted the show canceled, so it was done. It was horrible. <laughs> it really was. There were tickets and it was it was quite amazing. Anybody else? Yes. Uh, was your husband in acting and, and how did you meet through that way? Or, you know? No, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> He's not an actor. Uh, but we did meet um, backstage. Uh, he was the prop man at... <laughs> <laughs> At the Cape Playhouse in Dennis, Massachusetts, tw 25 years ago this summer, next summer, he uh, handed me an ice cream every night before I went on stage. I was doing uh, Summer and Smoke with Eva Marie Saint at this beautiful Summerstock Theater, and that's where we met. <laughs> and it's wonderful because he was a techie, as they say, and uh, so working around many actors for a long time, and then he worked in opera, and uh, he understands the artistic temperament, shall we say. <laughs> so it's a good match, I think, 25 years later. <laughs> I'm going to talk to him about that part. <laughs> so before we let you go, we got to know now. When we see you on the street, when people come on the street, do they, have they come up? I've seen people kind of, when they see you, and myself included, kind of assume that position, like, I don't think I'll bother her, but gee, I know it's for anyone. <laughs> how do you feel about being a celebrity in a small town? What, how do you handle that? What, what do you wish people would and would not do? You know, the funny thing is Jessica Lang was wandering around the lobby here the other day when I was talking to the custodian, Dave, about some table I needed set up. And I went through the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. And she 
looked so uncomfortable and so lost. The box office wasn't open. And I thought, well, I'll say, okay, I'll say, um, <laughs> may I help you? And, um, you know, and, I, and you kind of look in there and you think, does she know that I'm an actress too? Maybe she never saw TV and I, I don't know. So I thought, I'm not going to be one of those that does that. And, the, and I thought, well, if I say, may I help you, then what am I going to say? I don't know anything about the... I don't, I don't, you know, I just a volunteer here. So um, please say hi to me. It's, it, can, it can be very lonesome when people don't. I, that's the hard part of it. And usually the people who are kind enough and gracious enough to not want to say hi, to inter interrupt, uh, are the ones you really want to know. It's the ones with the papers in your face when you're having dinner with your family that say, please sign five for my, you know, my family, um, that you wish, you know, you could maybe do without once in a while, but, but really, please say hi. I, I appreciate it, and so does my family. So what did you say to Jeff? <laughs> she left. <laughs> Honestly, I saw her, and I did the same thing that everybody does to me. She was in the daily grind where I was getting coffee, and I looked at her and I thought, that looks like my friend from California. Why, what's Maggie Phelps doing here in Hudson? I was thinking, and that, doesn't isn't that what happens when you see somebody, you think, that person looks so familiar. Where do I know them from? So I'm doing that, and then I thought, oh, because it's Jessica Lang. Okay. <laughs> and then I and I was walking back to the Phipps, and she was walking to the Phipps, and I thought, oh, that's interesting. And then we kind of did this kind of smile, and we walked in, and <laughs> thank you, thank you all. This has been a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you very much, Linda, for your comments. We really welcome you to the Hudson area, and we look forward to the production. They'll be the last two weekends in October, right? You can buy your tickets probably today. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I think this is a great new venture for the, for the youth, and uh, it's an outstanding experience. I did a little bit of theater in high school, too, and all I can say, John is laughing at that. <laughs> Actually, if you'd really like me to go into the whole scenario, I'd be happy to, but see that we're running out of time. But anyway, what I can I say you, from... What would you like to do down here? You can do whatever you want to do. <laughs> well, <laughs> you just asked Linda that. We still have 10 minutes. <laughs> so when okay. people see you on the street, are we supposed to say that? <laughs> 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 I can't, I can't believe I haven't signed any autographs, though. I mean, I moved here from Minnesota, and I'm, anyway. Uh, <laughs> Everybody's going, I thought you were Jessica Lane. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all I could say is on a personal note, and I won't go to depth about my whole uh, few little small things that I did, but um, it is a great experience, and it is something that the youth and I did uh, through high school, you really do carry on with you. And I'm really pleased to see that this program is going on in Hudson because it really does have an effect on the youth and, and what they do and what they move forward. I mean, look at me, you know. <laughs> it could be a prime example for that. Anyway, I'm going to move right along here. And uh, thank you again, Linda. We really appreciate you being here today. And do buy your tickets for the, the, for the uh, scenes that will be done the last two weekends here in October. The next Good Morning Hudson will be on December 9th. Thank you to the sponsor of today's program, Landmark uh, F&M, Landmark, and uh, to our featured speaker. Thank you for coming, and have a great day.